Hey, how's it going? And today I'm going to show you how to make a custom angle kit for your car with just a grinder and a welder. So this is stock angle and this is angle kit that's custom. With this modification, I now have 67 degrees at full lock. So why do an angle kit? The reason being is for drifting. So you can do very hard, deep drifts into deep corners, go faster, and you can hold a harder angle into the turn. This is the complete. I still have to do the other side, but I will show you how I did it and how I made it removable so I can put it back to stock within five minutes. So if you already know how to drift and you are on stock setups for your angle, you will benefit huge from doing an angle kit because you will be able to have a recovery of having more angle and you will also have deeper and wider drifts, just wide open in the corner. It's sweet. I'll show you how I did it. So this is stock angle, and this is angle kit that's custom. So first thing I gotta do is take this wheel off, and I will show you my secret on how I figured out how to do this. With having it all reversible right back to stock, it's got to remove this castle nut off this tie rod, hammer on the side until it breaks loose, pop it right out. Just like that. All right, it's time to listen up. So this is the hole that the tie rod goes in. And that's what turns the actual front wheels. So it'll go back and forth and that's actually making the front wheel slash hub yaw left and yaw right. And the positioning of this tie rod is very important when it becomes a situation with angle of the wheel. Why? And it's because of the actual pendulum. There's a pivot point down here on the ball joint. And this is another ball joint that goes in and out with the tie rod. And the closer the tie rod is to the actual center where this ball joint is, the more angle the actual steering will have with the same amount of throw with the actual steering rack. So therefore, if I move this hole closer to the center pendulum right here, it will give me a significant amount of angle. So what I did to the other side, after a lot of math and figuring out how much angle I needed more, I've got the conclusion that an inch and a corner outside to outside of the hole, moving it closer to the center is the perfect amount for max angle that my axles can handle and that the actual car chassis can handle. So when I set that hole, this is the hole that I'm moving. I'm gonna be moving it an inch and a quarter on this side to that side. So after a bunch of math, I figured out what the car can handle for angle and the axles without binding and everything. I came to the conclusion that moving this hole over 11 sixteenths is the perfect amount to get lock to lock real tight and not hit the actual subframe or anything. And making another hole over here. So what most people do is they cut this and shorten it. So, and then it's closer to the center. But if you cut this piece and move it, then you don't have the factory position. So what I'm going to do is I am going to add another hole that is literally 11 sixteenths from that one in a perfect line. So when I move this tie rod from this one to this one, the wheels are still straight, but in an angle, it's actually way more full lock to lock angle. So if you don't follow, I'm literally putting this hole beside this one. So the pendulum is actually closer to this hole that the tie rod is in and that will get me a significant amount of angle. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna grind away and basically pocket this piece right into here and get it exactly where I need it, tack it, then fully weld it, test it, and then make sure everything's good. And the biggest thing is I want the steering wheel in the center, so dead straight, and having this in there, and then putting this 
tie rod into the other hole without the hub moving at all. I was lucky enough to get this off a donor car from my buddy and that was a huge help for me to make this possible. So what I'm gonna do is I'm literally going to make a cut right along here and then that is where I'm going to put the close part to this hole and you'll see a lot better in a second. So here is the piece I cut off. So basically what I'm gonna wanna do is get this side by side with this old knuckle. So I'm gonna cut a notch in here and there and then this one is literally gonna sit right in beside it. I gotta do some measuring and make sure I make a correct line. Okay, so there's the notch, and here is my new knuckle that I'm gonna be putting in. So as you can see, I still need to make a flat spot over there so it sits in more, because it actually has to be in line. Because the actual tie rod, as it goes out on an angle, is making this gonna go in just slightly, like a mil or two. So I'm just gonna notch it, get it in there, and then I'm gonna do some testing and make sure that from this hole to the other hole is the 11 sixteenths from outside to outside. So basically right here to right here it has to be 11 sixteenths. And then I have to make sure that I've got it the right in and out here, because if I don't, it's gonna change the actual degree when I put it into the there for driving straight. So that's very important too. So what I do for that is I just have it here put the tie rod in and then put it into the other hole. And if the hub doesn't move for any type of toe when the wheel is straight, the steering wheel, I'm in the exact spot I wanna be. Got it notched in and I made it large so I will have to take more off to get that correct measurement. So like I said, I need 11 sixteenths from the outside of the current one, which is the blue one, to the outside of this one, which is this, the left side. So the left side of each, the furthest point, is 11 sixteenths that I need. All right, I'm gonna give a quick measure here. I measured this about 10 times and it's an inch and a quarter right to the edge to edge. And that is exactly what I need. And it is 11 sixteenths from left side to left side. So when I'm saying left side to left side, so left side to left side is 11 sixteenths and then outside to outside is an inch and a quarter. So I'm right there. All I've got to do is figure out the in and out about it. So I've got to bolt everything back up and check it out. Sick. So I've got everything bolted up as if it was going to be driving, except for the axle, which does not matter at this point. So what I've got to do is make sure the steering wheel is straight. So I got the steering wheel dead straight. Here's my two holes. I can literally put this in to either hole and the hub does not turn at all. Watch. So it's in there. Boom. So when I change from the stock position to the other position, it doesn't move at all. Watch. No movement, no change at all in pitch. If the wheel's straight, if the wheel wasn't, that'd be a different story because this is going to change the actual pendulum of the steering. So now I've got the steering in the middle and I've got to figure out where this goes along here. So I'm going to put the tie rod into the original position and then I'm going to hold with my hand right there and then move the tie rod back into the new one and see which where this is going to move and then I can adjust it by going in or out until I find that perfect position then I can tack it in.
So as you can see in that time lapse, is when I had that in there, I was going from the inside to outside and the hub wasn't moving at all. So what I've got to do now is I have to notch everything so I can get some good welds in there because I'm going to have to just stack some dimes in corners as much as I can. So I'm, I need good angles. I need angles like this so I can fill in here and then fill all the way around and make, make this thing rock solid, never going to break again. So, or not again, but never going to break. So what I've got to do is just notch them out, weld it in. So I've got everything angled so I can get a good bite on each end. Should be dope. So I also did in here, it's got a nice chamfer in there, chamfer down there, big chamfer up here, and then all the way underneath too. Time to weld it in. For me, it's really important to make sure that when I move the actual tie rod into the different hole, that it is the same zero toe at center. So I've got one tack in it. After three attempts, I finally got it. As you can see, when I have it in this one, and then take it out and put it in this one, the hub does not turn at all. That's because I have it perfectly lined up. And that's exactly what I want. So I'm very happy with that. All right, I got the tax in. I'm just laying the car down. And I'm gonna make sure the wheels are straight. And the wheel is it's dead straight. Let's see about this front drivers. That's dead straight. And what about this guy? Dead straight. Honestly, I think I nailed it right on the button. I'm super pumped about that. This is in the knuckle that I made and the stock setup was set up for zero toe. And that looks like zero toe as well. So with moving the holes, it still has zero toe and that is exactly what I want. So I'm gonna have a straight steering wheel and straight wheels when I change those holes. So driving straight will be mint. It's just when I turn it, it's just gonna crank the wheels in like a freaking forklift. Damn. I don't wanna turn the wheel right now, like the steering wheel right now, because I only have like three tacks on it and I. Bet it'll snap the tax. But bit, man, that is so so sick. That is, honestly, I'm pretty impressed on that. That's all by eye, all by eye. And I have them set to that 11/16th um, apart, so they should be the exact same angle once I'm all done. So I'm gonna jack it up, finish the welding, and then give her a final try and maybe uh, check out how much angle I got. I, from this side, I remember I got 67 degrees, so I'll double check that. Sweet, so she's all welded up, ready to go. All I've got to do is put the axle in, put the bolts in for the 17 mil right here on the actual tie rod, and I'm good to go, wheels on. Take it off the trailer and give it a try. Sweet, so let's test out this angle. Let's really see what she's got for the first time on the floor. 
angle boys look at that that's some heavy angle i'm really happy with that so what i want to do is test it out drive it around a lot feel how much more angle i actually have see if it rubs see how it works i think it's gonna work great i'm gonna go check it out i'm so excited let's see how this works I just ran over my freaking battery charger, I think. Damn it. Damn. <laughs> Sweet, let's see what this thing's got. Let's see what's different, let's see what's new. Wow, the steering's way more sensitive, I can tell you that much. That's as far as I've went so far with the angle and I have much much more but honestly like that is already a huge difference I haven't even cranked the wheel all the way yet so I'm super stoked damn like it's already poking out and I'm not even like I have half a turn more I'm gonna put the camera on my MX3 to film my MX3. I'm literally gonna hook it up right here. Sixty-seven degrees of angle now. Woo! So when I was drifting last weekend, I found that I didn't have enough angle, so I gained myself a bit because when I was on the deep corners, I couldn't get my car really, really uh, angled into the corner because I didn't have a huge steering angle. And if you don't have a big steering angle, you will spin out time after time unless you are not wanting to go really deep into the corners. This is a safety mechanism, kind of, because you can go wider into the corner and still have a little bit more angle to save a spin out. Yeah, so I couldn't really do too much in the parking lot. It's packed in there, but it's so much better. It feels like I'm driving a race car that drifts. Weird combination, but that is it. This is the animal, twin engine MX-3, twin turbo, all wheel drive, monster. It's gonna be quite a, quite a machine when I'm drifting it now. I barely even got it sideways and I was like this on the wheel. So like I'm gonna be able to go balls deep into corners, really get it wide and have a time drifting. I can't wait to do it. I'll see you in the next one. I am going to be drifting at a very cool spot. It's a secret, but I'll keep you posted in the next video. All right, we'll see you in the next one. Like, comment and subscribe.